So we as secular students have shown ourselves to be capable organizers, communicators, and activists. We've made our campuses safer for students of all beliefs and ideas, and made administrators more aware of their obligation to provide us all with equal treatment. But despite being such an important part of the secular movement, it seems like many student organizers have very little contact with any secular organizers in their local communities. We do good work on campus and then wait until after we graduate to get in any involvement in the local secular community. This is unfortunate because student groups have so much to gain from building a connection with the local atheist, humanist, secular, skeptic, and free thought groups. If we as students want to embody the notion that we are the present and not just the future of this movement, it will be by becoming a part of the local secular community right now. Fortunately for us, this is one of the easiest things a student group can do. Before I ever seriously considered getting a group started at the high school, I started showing up at meetings of Orlando skeptics, and I could not have asked for a better introduction to this community. During my first few weeks there, I made friends I still work with today. Aside from being a great group of friends, I found them to be essential to keeping the group going once I did ultimately get it started. And since I found out that so many student groups do not take this valuable opportunity, I hope that I could, give you, that I could take the opportunity to share why it's so important to build these connections. So what do we get out of the relationship? Well, the most obvious thing is money. As much, fun, <laughs> as much fun as it is applying to the allocations committee on campus for funding for events, they occasionally see fit not to give us the money we ask for. During my first year at college, Daryl Ray said he wanted to give a talk on campus. Now, there was no free thought group on campus, and I didn't know how to register an event at the college, and to be honest, I didn't even know if anyone would show up. So of course I agreed to organize it. <laughs> Within the first couple of weeks, or within a few weeks of the talk, I hadn't even been able to get a hold of the allocations committee for an honorarium, much less put in a request for money. So realizing I was running low on options and the deadline was upon me, I put in a call to the local humanist group. The first question their organizer asked me was, how much do you need? And the second was, to whom do I make the check? So I quickly, I quickly went back to all the materials that I'd made and changed the name of the event from Sex and God to Sex and God, brought to you by humanists of Sarasota Bay. <laughs> At the event, I gave an organizer from that group an opportunity to talk about the group and invite students to join. So students got to see a great speaker they wouldn't have otherwise, and community members got to promote themselves to a crowd of young people. And everybody was happy except for all the students who were outraged by the mere existence of Daryl Ray. <laughs> Aside from sponsoring the group, I also invited members of the community to attend, and they provided much needed moral support during what turned out to be a hairy Q&A. They hated Daryl Ray, I don't know why. Because <laughs> he's so much fun. So, so lovely. Yeah. So a connection with these groups opens you up to money if you need it, but they also open you up to wisdom. When our groups face challenges, say a member who likes to reject your meeting agenda and substitute his own, we usually turn to Secular Student Alliance for help. This is because SSA draws on the collective wisdom of all their staff, board, and any other uh, community members who can contribute uh, wisdom. They've done an amazing job in the group running guide and on their website, addressing a wide range of problems that our groups are likely to face and presenting solutions that make sense in the context of student groups in general. All the same, there's something to be said for sitting down with someone and talking through a problem. As you become connected with these groups, you'll begin to meet people that you trust for advice. And while you probably already have people in your life who fill this role, this, these groups will connect you to people who are in the movement and understand its idiosyncrasies. As you become more familiar with these people, they'll understand your group in particular and understand what challenges it faces. This combination of outside perspective, familiarity, and experience will allow them to provide targeted and specific advice that no guidebook ever could. During my time in this movement, I've been given ideas by community members that I never would have thought of on my own. And occasionally, I've been able to return the favor. You have no idea how impressed the local humanist group was with my knowledge of the Facebook. <laughs> so a connection with these groups opens you up to money and wisdom. But they also give you a chance for you to, to take your group further and become a part of the secular movement. So many, many of our groups list among their goals the fight against unfair policies on campus that disadvantage atheists and religious minorities. We are in the unique position that we're right where the injustice is happening, and we can observe and document it without having to go out of our way. 
community groups give us somewhere to turn for organizing demonstrations against these injustices, for contacting a group like Freedom From Religion, and if necessary, for filing a lawsuit. Freedom From Religion Foundation is a wonderful organization that will talk to any concerned citizen, even if they're young. But once gears start turning, you'll be glad to have a community group on your side. Community members can step up and volunteer to act as plaintiff in a lawsuit related to your school. And as much fun as it might sound spending months bouncing between your lawyer's office and the courtroom, this is liable to interfere with schoolwork and as such is undesirable. <laughs> but these groups also give you opportunities off campus. Say American Atheists wants to put on a demonstration at a city council meeting. Dave Silverman will fly down and hold up a sign on the Capitol steps, but to have any real impact, they have to bring in members of the community. American Atheists will contact any community groups that they're connected with, especially their own affiliates. And if these groups know that you exist, they will invite you out to these events. Then your group has had the opportunity to contribute to the struggle for church-state separation. You've probably enjoyed some media attention, which can only help you in bringing in new members. And Dave Silverman knows who you are, which can only be a good thing, especially if any of your members are interested in a future in the secular movement. So a connection with these groups opens you up to money, wisdom, and activist opportunities. But how do you know they'll want to help you? Well, keep in mind how similar these community groups are to yours. They're interested in their continued survival into the future. Just as it's in your best interest to recruit younger students who can take over the group after you get hit by a bus, <laughs> it's in the best interest of these groups to bring in young people who can take over leadership after their current leaders retire and join humanist groups in Florida. <laughs> they will be thrilled to have you asking for their help, and they'll be eager to provide it because they know that a small investment in you now means you'll stay in the movement after you graduate. And that's how this whole thing keeps going. So, we're all convinced that we want to be connected with these groups, but how do we find them? Well, the resource you need to know is meetup.com. Meetup.com. Meetup is a social networking site that hosts groups and allows them to publish their events. As you'd expect, Meetup has, group, has uh, uh, groups for a wide range of interests, from normal things like art, music, and science, to weird things like groups for people who have opinions about specific typefaces. You will be, <laughs> wherever you are in the country, there's a very good chance that you will find results by searching terms like atheist, skeptic, humanist, secular, and free thought. And again, it's meetup.com. Uh, I was able to find 13 groups just in the Columbus area by searching these terms on Meetup. So it's a very good chance that you'll be able to have success wherever you are in the country. Even if you're in a small town, it's worth checking. Now any of the groups that you find are likely to have different interests, goals, and, and focuses. So it's a good idea to find as many groups as you can and then get a sense about them from their published description. Once you... Uh, uh, even though Meetup allows you to find lots of groups, not every group in the, in the world is going to use that resource. So you can also check Google and Facebook for more groups, which is a process that you guys will probably figure out. <laughs> Once you've gone to one group, you'll probably find that it's easy to find out about all the others anyway. There's something of a network of these groups. People are rarely members of just one organization, so somebody at the atheist group can probably tell you all about their experience at the humanist group or the skeptic group or the free thought group, but be careful because you're likely to find that any information you get from members is liable to be mixed in with opinion, and you'd hate to get turned off of a group that you've never even attended. Uh, so the takeaway from this talk is 80% showing up. Find some events that interest you, RSVP, and show up. It's important to RSVP because organizers will often use an advanced headcount to help them plan the event. Uh, pub trivia, drinking skeptically, game night, movie screenings, speaker events, discussion groups, volunteering, jazz jams. These are all perfectly good opportunities for you to meet members of the community who care about our movement. They're also perfectly good opportunities for members of your group to get together without you having to go to the trouble of organizing any events yourself. These events are designed to help people meet, so take the opportunity to introduce yourself to as many people as you can. Whatever you do, though, be sure to talk to the organizer of the group, or if they're not in attendance, then the host of the event. They will probably be thrilled to meet you, and rightly so, because what you do is important. By the end of the event, make sure you have some way to contact them, either through Meetup's personal message feature or through Facebook. After the event, it's a good idea to send a follow-up email. Just say, it was good to meet you. I look forward to working with you in the future. This is also a good idea after a job interview. 
Once you've uh, become more familiar with these groups and shown up to some of their events, you can begin to communicate with their organizers about ways that your groups can collaborate. You may even consider promoting an officer specifically to a position for keeping up with these groups. This officer should attend meetings whenever possible, or at the very least send a regular email newsletter to let them know what you're up to. This way you remain present in their mind and they know that you haven't all been hit by a bus. You may even, this, organize, this uh, officer may even consider or, or should also keep members of your group up to date on what events these groups are holding uh, and could even consider promoting this information to the larger campus community. And this is a way of throwing back support to the groups that have been so helpful to you. Uh, and whatever you do, make sure that you invite these groups to your meetings. Sitting in on one of your meetings is bound to give these organizers a better understanding of how your group works, what problems it's facing, and most importantly, how it can provide support. Just be sure to explain in great detail how to park on your campus. <laughs> so Greg Lammers is the National Affiliate Director of American Atheists, my old job, and he's given a talk at this conference before about the importance of these relationships. Now, I already understood what it was like to be a student going into these, uh, this interaction, but watching his talks has given me a better understanding of what it's like to be a community member and uh, as such has given me a much fuller perspective. So while he's not here this year, I want to thank Greg Lammers for his work in promoting what I consider to be a very important idea in the secular movement. So this movement is full of incredible people. And these people all receive varying levels of recognition for their hard work. Some people in this movement are so well recognized that everybody in this room knows their name. But for each one of them, there is a whole crowd of activists and communicators scattered around the country who work just as hard and believe in our cause just as strongly as any of the big names. These are the people who are giving secular invocations at city council meetings, who are promoting our ideas to the local media, and who are alerting national organizations when action needs to be taken around the country. These are people that your group deserves to have on its side, and they want to help you. All you have to do is let them. Thank you.